Hey there everybody, Joe here. Today is Saturday, Saturday Monster Matinee. So today's plan is to take the sketch I created yesterday and make it into a virtual tabletop token or a VTT token. And uh, so uh, the first step for that is to, uh, for me to take my, my phone and uh, take a picture of the, uh, of, this, of the sketch, right? So I take the picture, save it, and let's get, let's go over to the computer. Okay, I've taken the picture, now I'm at my computer, and the first thing I do is open up the file. So for me, I use Dropbox, and it saves it, uh, it basically, uh, my phone automatically saves to a certain folder on my Dropbox file, and uh, it uh, should show up pretty well. Let's see, let it set, reset here, go through the whole big giant folder, and let's see, Pick one of the ones that looks like it's pretty good. And we open it up. That's it. So uh, then the next thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to crop it. Well, actually, I'm not going to crop it down. I'm going to use the uh, marquee tool, uh, copy that, and create a new file. Uh, I want this to be uh, square. So at the, at the moment, it's um, pretty low resolution. and. For a virtual tabletop token, you actually don't need much resolution because it's all on the screen. I'm going to kind of, I want to create, I want to create this, um, but I'm hoping that at some point I come up with like a phrase or something and uh, it ends up on my Threadless site too. So uh, I'm going to set up a 6,000 pixel square, but for you, for one inch, uh, really 72 DPI or maybe uh, probably 96 DPI square is probably all you'll need. Um, because on screen, it just has to do with how much detail do you want to do, how big is it going to be, is it a, this is a Sturge, so it's a small monster, so um, you only need one inch square, right? Um, but you'll see that the detail will, will be pretty dramatic. I mean, I, I'm going to do a lot of detail, but you don't need that much detail. So let's go with the square. Uh, let's create it. Uh, I'm going to paste my image in here, and then I'm going to do a control T, which should... Oh, let's see. Oh yeah, here we go. Control T, which should let me kind of scale it up a little bit. I want to change the angle of the creature and kind of get it situated where I think it might go. Let's above the background layer. I'm going to go to the circle tool, the ellipse tool, for you know to be fancy because it, because uh, you know obviously you'd do a. Let's see. Let's get it to be sort of big, and then let's get it to fit. Okay. And let's see. So now it's not. I'm going to use the V tool, the move tool, which is touch, you know, hit V. And then above here, uh, let's we want to align it to the canvas. So I'm going to do center it and center it. And it didn't shift much because I was close. <laughs> nice. Okay. So the other thing too is let's let's change the fill fill color to uh, white. Uh, and black, let's see, I've got, I think I have colors here somewhere. Okay, here we go. Um, white, and then we'll make the um, stroke black, or just dark, doesn't matter right now. We'll change these colors uh, at the end. This is really just to make me, to give me an idea of where I want this guy at. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do, because I wanna refine the sketch a bit, a bit, is let's pull the opacity down on him so he's pretty light, and I'm gonna put a, a, another, layer above and I'm gonna call this layer uh, sketch okay now I use a w w Wacom Intuos Pro tablet um, and uh, I'm gonna to go to one of my like sketching tools here uh, new sketch it's basically just a round brush with um, uh, what is it called uh, with the, uh, the transfer and shape dynamics turned on so you'll see that in the sketch layer you know you kind of get it's, right now it's pretty big so undo out of that and let's zoom in on this guy and uh, oh let's actually let's first first thing we need to do is fix finish his wing off right so here's this got to come out here let's put that there so we can get actually get a wing and I'm, I'm being a little sloppy right now because right because at this point we're just kind of refining this thing 
get make sure we kind of get the idea of, of where stuff is. The, the final image where I use ink will be much more ink. Uh, where I use like my black, what I call inking, traditionally would have been inking. Um, let's, give him some, let's give him some claws. This is always where the, sometimes you, you kind of get the, you know, I'm not looking at my hand, right? So I like the way that, that uh, bigger forearm looks here. So let's put that here and then have it spread out the same way. So we've got a lot of scales there. Let's get this, do the same thing. I see I went over the edge there. I'm kind of trying to keep him to be in a, in a uh, inside the circle, right? So let's see. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, so he's not in the circle anymore. So what we can do is uh, I can take the two layers, Control T, which is transform, and let's shrink him up a little bit and move him down so that he's more in the center, and then Control Zero to blow it up big. So now he's kind of fitting in the fitting in the shape. And let's see if uh, there's anything uh, sketch-wise uh, that maybe I can adjust a little bit more. So right now, if you look, I've got uh, it's 50%. So let's zoom in a little bit more. Um, but you can see like it's 100%. So it, for a virtual tabletop, nobody's going to see that you know how I drew these eyebrows in, right? They're just going to see the, the general shapes and uh, how things are going. But I want to, when I ink it, I'd like it to be a little bit less um, of me just kind of free forming it, you know, basically, you know, just inking from where I kind of want it, want it to be. So let's get this set up here. So we get the eyes. And then I think that's pretty good here. this let's get these arms to be a little bit more if we I think if with these arms if we give it a little bit more um, like it looks like it has dexterity it make the fingers look a little more nimble uh, you could do some kind of neat things in your games where you have um, like these are intelligent right and um, maybe they um, you know they have some kind of whole like where they farm people for blood. Okay, now let's go, how do I want to do these? Let's, other, other appendages. Let's see here. Let's do these like they're kind of hook-like, hook right? Now I can do, if I hit X, it goes from black to the, the background color, which is white. And I'm just gonna kind of, not, I'm not erasing, I'm just kind of covering things up so that when I ink, I kind of know where I want to go. Oops, I've got to go to X. All right. And it's not too bad if I overlap things a little bit. Let's get this hand a little bit more hand-like in the background here. I know this is going to be, I'll avoid too much of uh, things looking too ambiguous, right? So what's going to end up happening is is this back. Oh, so when I when I increase the size, there's two. I use uh, I use a lot of shortcuts. <laughs> um, so um, when I increase the size, it's the uh, I think it's the oh yeah it's the brackets. So um, a lot of time I I don't um, adjust things. I don't go up and back back and forth. And I know there's other um, there's other shortcuts that might be easier to do. I think there's a way of holding down a control shift and then uh, adjusting the size. But, um, you know, you kind of get used to what you're used to. Um, when I first started, I think my first my first foray into Photoshop um, was just before, I think it was, I think Photoshop 2. So just before layers were a thing. And that was pretty huge. So, um, you know, something you shouldn't take for granted, layers. <laughs> okay, let's make this is gonna be dark. So we wanna have a pretty high contrast with these, the way we ink this in. Let's, let, I think this tail, 
Uh, let's make this a stinger too. Well, it, it doesn't have to be poisonous, but um, that's another way it can grab onto people, right? Let's put a let's put a claw here and then a claw here. Go to the white so we can see where it is. Put some other claws in here, All right? This will be a claw, claw, and then these are kind of the, the back, kind of back spike feather things, right? Okay, let's zoom out once more, and I think that's going to work out pretty well. Let's maybe let's let's um let's give them a better another angle. I mean, obviously, this is going to be um, since it's round. Uh, uh, you, you should be able to, to rotate. Well, you won't be able to rotate it because it's going to be in a uh, virtual tabletop. So anyway, uh, okay. So now what I do is I'll group these two layers. I group the sketch, control G to group the sketch and layer uh, one things, which is the image. And uh, I'm just going to call this reference. I double click on it and call it reference. And then I'm going to add a new layer and call it and double click on it. I'm going to call this ink. So the reference layer, I think I'm going to drop the whole opacity down just a little bit more. And then the ink layer, I'm going to start inking and I use the pencil tool. And the pencil tool, um, what's interesting about the pencil tool, let me just, I'll zoom in so you can see. So the pencil tool is basically just black and white. It's just, it's just, there's only two levels of uh, I mean, I can use the, um, I can set it up with transfer if I wanted to, but I don't um, because uh, I want to make sure that the edges of the thing like kind of stay where they're at. I don't want to have a, fu a fuzzy edge. So like with this, with my brush, um, I'm going to turn off the transfer so you can see the difference here. So with my brush, uh, you get that thick and thin lines, but when you zoom way in, let's see here. The wrong tool. If I zoom way in, you see how this is basically just a pixel, and then this is a fuzzy edge. So some of it's gray and some of it's white. Uh, I I just I think maybe it's because of it could be it could be that that's this is the way I, I've always done it, but I prefer that uh, that hard edge. So all right, let me Control A to select all, delete with the backspace, delete deselect de Control D, and uh, now. Let's go ink, and I tend to, I like to start with the eyes. So let's see, uh, let's say Shift B to make sure I've done in the pencil tool. And I think 30, uh, this is a 30 uh, uh, thing. I try and keep my pencil tool the same uh, size in the beginning so that all of my lines are right the same kind of, you know, variation. So let's go up underneath here, kind of come through. I want my. I'd like to my. I'd like my, the lower parts of, of the lines to be thicker, and uh, I want to give because I want to give a lot of variation to uh, to my uh, to my lines. Control Z. Sometimes when you do a lot of drawing on the computer, control you. A couple times I've been drawing uh, in my sketchbook, and I try and uh, let's go, go down here. And I try and do Control Z in real world, and somehow it doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Okay, let's get this thicker, and then come out to be thin. Uh, it didn't work. Let's go thicker. Sometimes when you're pulling your arm all the way across a page. Okay, let's fix this up. Do a little bit of erasing. So with the eraser, since I'm using a pencil, I want to make sure my eraser is also set up as a pencil. And uh, that way, um, the lines still remain with that uh, harder edge. So 83%, let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's here, get this eye to look like an eye. And I do a little bit of a black line around my uh, iris. And let's put this, let's make this a weird, a weird shape. Come through underneath here too, so we can get some to, the eyes to pop a little bit more. Just 
from the ink. Come around. I have these little frills. Uh, in the original design, this could be like the uh, the part of the part of the animal that um, expands when it swells up with blood. If you look at a if you look at a, a mosquito, their abdomen has you know basically becomes its bag, right? Becomes this bag of blood that it can move around with. All right, let's come through underneath these like this weird rib cage. Is kind of a, I see the, the it being more like a mosquito where it's got this back. Okay, this is going to be come through here. Okay, let's make sure we get the uh, front claw kind of right. And I can't decide if I want. Let's give it. Let's give it three fingers. Here, I want this to come through a little bit more the uh, front side of the, um, the front side. This is going to be in the back, so I want this to be really dark. Okay, so once I, as I'm working through this ink, let's just go a little faster here. Because what I'll do after this, this this stage, I'll come. I'll turn off the back the reference layer. Ooh, that's going to be a weird angle. Let's go through here. I'll turn off the reference angle and the reference layer, and um, and then add a little bit more detail. Make sure things are black where I want them to be black. Let's add a little bit of texture here. Come through. Maybe add a little texture to this wing here. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little fast with this um, in terms of the drawing, mainly because I don't know if you want to spend three hours watching me pick, watching me ink this, but um, maybe do. Well, I think in the future I'll probably work on some things with uh, with. Uh, traditional materials and I think some of those will probably be uh, more um, what do you call it uh, probably longer a little more long form see how that goes M multiple days maybe break a, break it up Let's see, we want to put these up here some of these are gonna go some of these are gonna become totally black I think just for the Some of this will adjust as we get the uh, some of these will I'll adjust as I once I turn off that reference layer because at this point some of the reference layer your eyes filling it in with uh, how the sh how the shading should go and once the ink is done the inking is done then we'll color it All right so that'll be fun. Thicker line. Claw. Thick line. Claw. Ooh, let's change the angle on this because there's going to be. This whole wing might. Some of this detail might disappear once I add in the shading. But, you know, you got to. Uh, this is like a little bit of planning ahead, right? Woo! Follow that edge. Your arm's moving. At, <laughs> when your arm, wrist, and hand are all moving at, the, at, at different rates. Right? Skills. <laughs> all right. Yeah, see, like, definitely I want to come have, have this come through as a, as a dark... Fill that in. And I, now, so I'm going to switch to the paint bucket with with the the letter G, and then I just tap in there. 
I've got it. I've got the paint bucket I have set up so that it's uh, not anti-aliasing. You want it to be continue, t contiguous, um, but no anti-alias because if you have the anti-alias uh, set, it tries to make that feather that edge, and then that'll, that'll goof up your solid blacks, and and then the whole thing falls apart. All right, here. Well, at least at least the way I do it, so it'll fall apart. So this is going to be a mostly black. Claw here, because I want that hand to show up, and then let's kind of looks like I've got it in the wrong place here. So let's come through, and change it up so that they match. And let's get these fold ridges to look like more like a ridge. There's something that could expand out, right? And let's get that claw over here. So you can see I, sometimes when it, with the inking, I, I'll, I will uh, just kind of go with what, you know, if the line's wrong, you know, don't keep it. Don't Just because you drew it there doesn't mean you have to keep it there. All right. Inking is a guide. The pencils are a guide. I think that's why uh, you know some uh, in the in the comic book industry inkers can be like so. There's so much difference between the inker and the penciler, like they're so important because they really are the final, you know, final uh, final stage. Oops. Let's see here. Final stage in the artwork, right? Well, the colorist then, but. The inker is the uh, the one that kind of makes some of the final decisions on how things are going to be. I think, and then, so uh, I think for, for me, I think that maybe that's why I don't know if I've ever, I could ever really be an inker in the, in the comic industry. So I'd have a hard time following uh, following the lines. I'd be like, hey, I'm just doing it my my own way, and then the pencil would be like, What the hell did you do this for? Why did that happen? Oh man, what are you doing? Let's add some texture to this like spike. Get some kind of bony growth. Let's put some texture in back in here. I think I gotta fix them. Is, oh, we, I didn't do the whole other wing, right? So let's come through. I'm, whoa! Let's go come up from the bottom so we can match. Same thing here. Come up from the bottom. And let's come, down, come back down here, follow down. And let's the bottom. All spiky. Going up. Yeah. My uh, hand rubbed on a piece of the plastic and then gave me a little weird, little weird line. Let's see, I'm doing a lot of control Z's. All right, let's make sure we get this in. More texture there. Some of these lines coming up. Let's put some kind of a scaly texture on the bottom of that guy. Let's put some on the shoulder. Some on the top here. No, not on the top. Undo. Put it on the bottom. It's gonna, it's when it flies in, it's gonna come in at, at the person, right? So we're okay. So uh, we're at the point now where I want to uh, turn off the reference image, and I'm gonna zoom in now. Okay, so let's zoom in, and we want to fill out some of these textures here. So let's get and the shading. So 
so I'm kind of this is basically just a kind of a scumble scribble scribble um, version of of the uh, cross hatching cross hatching with a scribble so let's kind of come through here with some lines so we get some kind of skin texture and I think side here do we want that whole I don't know if I want the whole uh, whole wing to be black or not I want this to be all of a cross hatching thing because don't forget too so this is uh, the size I'm looking at but the size that it's going to be when you're looking at it on a virtual tabletop is much closer to this right and that uh, I mean, look at lots of detail, right? <laughs> so let's blow it up. And uh, we definitely want to have, I think that because of that, let's take this back wing. And oh, if we're worried, let's add another, let's just add another layer. So then we can, uh, we can play and kind of keep it where we can say, okay, well, how is this going to be if we fill it all in with black? And I'm, I basically, I'm trying to make, I'm drawing a shape all the way around without picking it up so that then I can use G and fill it in. So at that point, I think I like some of it, but I want to, I'm going to use the eraser tool and I'm going to come through to get, give it some extra, let's see, come through some extra where's it going on nice let's go thick to thin thin to thick now we're gonna fix that up a little bit here come back with the eraser see that I didn't you know because I'm faking this in but now because we're on an upper above a layer above everything we can uh, no we can't we have to go but we have to go down and we have to erase out so I was going to use a, some white but I want to add color to this later and I don't want to uh, we're going to add color to this later and I don't and I don't want to have to figure out okay what's that color is the white the white's not going to match so with this, let's come through with some of this behind here. I'm on that. Oop, I'm on the ink layer. Ah, that's alright. Let's go. But let's go above anyway. It's gonna be a little bit messy, but I can always control E to merge them both, merge both the both layers. So let's, we want this guy's face to show up, right? And because of that, we need to come through with some of these. We're going to lose a lot of detail that I put in, but I think it's going to make that, it's going to make the icon, I mean, the, it's going to make the token uh, that much easier to read on a table because it's small and you need it to be a little less, want these details to be big and legible as opposed to fine. We have to zoom in to see things. That's why sometimes with these tokens you can you can do them pretty fast. Kind of figuring it out, kind of fake it in. Some stuff. Let's give it what's come through with some V's. Are these thorns? Are they spikes? What are they? You know, how is this? stuff shows up Get some texture on this wing here I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the uh, wings look pretty dark with the color I 
think, let's add a little bit of like, like it's stretched taut, right? Just these kind of stretch lines a little bit. I think that'll help with the overall texture when I color it. Okay. Let's come through a little bit more here. I'm trying to follow the form. Let's put this dark here. All right, let's zoom out. Oh, we need some of this dark here back here too. texture. Let's um, go to the ink. Ooh, let's erase some of this because I want to fix that thumb here a little bit. Get some more wrinkles. Zoom out. Okay. I think that's pretty good for the ink. So I'm going to, I am going to take that other layer and uh, let's drop it back. So I'm gonna control E, drop it down. So now it's all one ink layer. I'm gonna add a new layer, drop it beneath the ink layer. The ink layer I'm gonna put on, uh, we're gonna keep it normal for now. We're gonna, on the ink layer, in this other layer, uh, we're gonna call it color. And then I'm gonna open up, go over to pure, and let's start it with, uh, let's go with purples. I think some purples could look kind of cool. But at least with purple, what'll happen is, is you'll be able to tell the shape as I fill it in. So I'm in this, I'm in the layer beneath the ink layer. So the key here is that I want to make sure that um, the line that I'm drawing isn't ever broken. Because if it's broken, so if it's filled, if it's a solid line like this, when I hit my paint bucket, it's gonna fill. But if it's not fit, if it's not connected, it's gonna fill everything, right? And we don't want that. We wanna fill just the guy. So here's a cool thing. Just go through. And sometimes what I'll do is, um, if I'm worried about, about the contours of a shape, what I'll do is it'll say, okay, here's this guy here, right? We want this, this to come through here. And I'll just come through and fill it, right? I'll just make sure that they're connected. So now I've got a shape. And then we can kind of see how it goes from the, uh, the fill. So make sure you connect. If you can't see where your where your line ends, you'll have a hard time seeing where it's going to connect here. So now sometimes what will happen is see how I went over that at that edge a little bit. Uh, what I'll do is instead of trying just undoing, I'll zoom in a little bit more, go to the eraser tool, and then just erase that that extra stuff and then zoom in Z uh, Z is the zoom uh, shortcut make sure it's connected so what this does by filling in this whole color shape I'm able to select it and then basically have it becomes its own mask so you can get more detailed with things too uh, with the masks if you have different colors uh, I'll make them into uh, their own channel layers. So let's see here, come through. And I think I'll show you how to do, well, I'll show, show that to you in a sec, because I'm going to um, make the eyes a, a different color. I think they'll be different, they'll be cool. And I would think we can make its belly a different color too, but it's all kind of a, um, let's come through here. So we can fill it in without losing track too much too badly but yeah this is so this is how I color things and I'm not sure if it's uh you know I'm not sure if it's the most efficient but and it's probably a little bit old school because I think I kind of first um, like learned how to do some of this at a uh, comic-con back in the 90s <laughs> so, 
uh, I'm sure there's some techniques that have been updated and uh, better ways of doing things. Put this over here, let's connect them down here so we know they're connected. Come through. Oh, they're connected, yep, thank, thank you. Uh, and there's there's a lot of times where if I'm not careful and you get these really weird shapes that I forget to fill something in that I'll I'll miss a line and then all of a sudden it's like where is that gap why do I, I keep coloring the whole page oh, here's a little nugget that I missed alert on my phone. Lovely. All right, come through. Come through. There's a little bit. I'm going over a little bit the edge a little bit here. Not too bad. Like it really realistically, if you you know, if this is a small just a small uh, token, nobody's going to see that. Oh, your purple came over the edge unless you're way over the edge, right? So, um, yeah, come through here. Sometimes I go over the edge on purpose, then it's like I don't get as nervous about, oh, my line's wrong, oh, my line's wrong, oh, my line's wrong. All right, there we go. So he's, first he's purple. Okay, so let's go in, let's give him kind of a light yellow eye. So I picked yellow, I come down a little bit in my color picker, and I'm gonna fill in his eye. The yellow. See how I went over a little bit there? So instead of the eraser, I'll just go and grab the purple, could use the alt key, grab the purple, and then I'll go back to grabbing the yellow. Fill that in. Uh, and then with yellow, let's go, um, maybe let's see what happens when we add a, give a pink, pinkish tone to start the eye form here. that time of day for alerts okay so what I'll do is now I use my magic wand tool and uh, I want to make sure that it's uh, not contiguous so like when I click here it selects all of my yellow zones and I'll go to channel and I'll add a channel and you can't tell where it is but what it is is because they're so they're so small but if I control uh, click on the alpha channel it'll reselect my yellow so I'm going to keep staying in this layer here. I'm going to select the pink, make another alpha channel. And we can call we can call these, you know, uh, iris so that we know and then come back, make sure you're in the R RGB. And then here's the purple. And we'll give it another one. This one I don't have to call. I don't have to call anything. Sometimes I will, but um, not today. Okay, so um, let's finish the eyes off first. So I'm just clicking here through here. Let's zoom in. Let's take this color and I wanna, let's make it, uh, let's give it some shading so we can kind of come through. I use hard edges when I color. And um, I just, I don't know, I like the way it looks. Go a little bit more red in here. Kind of give them some kind of give it a little bit of a pattern. We're gonna pick a bunch of different colors for this these pupils. More red. More red. And then I can uh, take a gray and use a uh, multiply and come through. Oh, we have to deselect. Make sure that we're coming through. 
And if I don't, as long as I don't keep doubling up on that, on that, uh, on that shape, it'll be okay. So there's the eyes. Now let's pick the, so now I'm gonna select the purple. And let's put in some highlights first. So come through, whoa, did I pick, what happened? Oh, I know why, I forgot, I set, it's still set to multiply. <laughs> so come through. I don't want this, where do I want these highlights to be? got a little dot right here so let's oops there we go hide it control h hides the little marching ants put some highlights on these ridges here some shadows shortly. Let's so we'll see how this is going to work. Give them some more detail. Looks like I've got some spots in the uh, here too. Oh. I'm using the wrong lasso tool. So that was what's happening. Okay. Item. Come through. I've got a few little highlights on the back wing here. texture just kind of being a little scribbly okay all right let's pull these make sure these pop forward here get his claws to look like Front. And then this claw, a little bit of a highlight here. Same thing here. I had some speckle. Highlights here, same thing. This is where we kind of add a little bit of texture, coloring. Let's come down. So it's the nice thing about having that, um, having the purple selected is that I don't have to worry about drawing over here. It won't let me draw there. So let's come up here. I can kind of focus more on the inside shapes. Get some texture there. Come through. Same thing, come through here. Okay, I think I want to add a little bit of a different color to his belly. 
So I'm going to select that purple. And what I'm going to do, because of the way this my color selectors is with the circle, I'm going to just go, kind of go to the other side and we'll pick a neutral, kind of a darker neutral and see how this looks with this greenish. It doesn't look good <laughs> in my eye. So let's go, let's select that purple again and uh, let's go more towards the yellow. No, actually what we can do, let's do this instead. Let's go take the, oop, I don't want that up there. Let's pick this pur purple and then go a little bit to the to there. There we go. I want this just to look like it's kind of a different part of its body. It's an underneath part. But I don't want it to be necessarily like that much different from the, from the rest of them. Now, I think though I want to take this color of the eye and let's pull it in down here. I'm doing that so that the it seems more uh, let's see so here we got you know how it is then see make sure I, there's more yellow to them right so let's do that keep doing it let's do that with some of the other tips of these claws here I don't even have the detail with it but I think um, there's no like there's no hard black edge. But I think that yellow pulls you know unifies it a little bit more. Okay, this purp this pink purple. Let's come through with a little bit more. Make these a little bit more obvious. Okay, and I think I can even pull a layer, pull, but do a layer above. But let's come through with this purple and let's come through with some darks. So that we can kind of finish this guy up, because I think that's really all he needs now is the, is that shad those shadowy dark tones. Maybe there's even some you know, on his back his back hand. It'll make things pop forward more. Here's where I, sometimes, because of how small things are, I will expand the uh, pencil tool so that I can be a little bit more, be a little faster filling stuff out. Darker, but I don't want them to be totally this front wing to be totally dark. I kind of want to have that it show up. I have to work through that lot that white line here again. Lighter. sloppy but like I said this is you know you can be a little sloppy when the when the, the thing you're creating is going to be you know an inch and back and forth The next thing I want to do is maybe I might add some effects. So there we go. That's the, the basic thing colored. 
Now let's go above and let's call this like effects. Effect. Because um, what I might do, let's see, I'm not, let's see, oh, <laughs> whoa, that was, uh, <laughs> that was, uh, let's call this Sturges. <laughs> and I, I reacted that way because I did all of that work and I hadn't saved. So um, let that be a lesson to you. Save early and save often. Um, because if you don't, uh, you do all of that work and then you have to redo it. So yikes. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Okay. Uh, so in this effect layer, I'm going to use some different uh, brushes here. And these are just really basic. This is just, I call this one fuzzed out. And it's just a really soft brush that doesn't have any transfer in it. But what we can do is, um, let's maybe we zoom in a little bit. And we can decide uh, maybe if we want some of that reddish. Oop. Got to deselect so that nothing's showing here. But if I want these to be a little bit like they're glowy red, and then I'm gonna come down and then use the white. We can kind of zoom out a little bit here so you can see before, after, before, after. And I think that's kind of cool. Um, so now. We'll, we'll leave that, but now we can basically play around with what's the color of the token itself. So, um, this is the layer of the ellipse. I've double clicked and it brings up the layer style. So let's do a gradient overlay with it. And uh, I used a red one before and I think since they're Sturges, red actually is um, uh, pretty, um, should be pretty good. I think that fits the theme, All right? Let's get it some dark. Right now, oh, let's make it, I want to make it, uh, let's make it radial and reverse it. Nope, we want it to be lighter on the inside. Uh, and then come through here, let's see here. We might, might have to adjust the, um, the scale. Yeah, I have it to 150%, so let's pull it down. And then um, let's, give a, let's give a stroke to this outside edge. And I want it to be also to be red, but let's have it be the solid red, right? Right. And then uh, I'm going to use my arrow key just so so it started as 13 pixels. And right now the position is on the inside. So I know that it's not going to overlap the edge. But let's do it, uh, let's give it, make it pretty thick. All right. Now one last thing I think I like, I, that I tend to like to do with my tokens. So oh, actually before I do that, let's select the ink effect ink and color layers and we'll group them too we'll call that that group sturge because now i can move it around a little bit right so like maybe let's have them a little bit lower and then let's take uh the text tool click here and let's say let's call it, let's just go sturge Beautiful, right? Just a plain word. No, not a plain word. Let's take, let's change that up. Let's. Uh, I like the crypt keep, crypt keep. So the fonts I use, I I, I, I use a lot of fonts, but Blambot, uh, I really like how they turn out. And he's got some great uh, licensing uh, terms. And uh, so if you're doing stuff for free, um, you have to look at his his site. But there, his prices are great. I, I don't I don't fault him him at all because he does a lot of really cool work, and his fonts are perfect. Um, so let's see. I think I like let's let's get that's a bucket of blood. Let's go gamma rays. That looks pretty cool. Okay, and then um, so I got the text text layer here. There's this tool here that basically lets me warp it. So let's give it a little bit of an arc, not that much of an arc. I think, right? So it looks like it's flying. Maybe uh, let's distort it vertically a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna double click on the text layer, which will let me do things like change the color. And uh, I think I'm gonna do the, go with the gradient again. Let's go with um, uh, red. 
red. Let's see here. Oop, took it off. Too far. Let's go with a little bit of a lighter red. Light red red. Right. Let's say okay. And I don't know if I like it as radial. Let's try a linear. And let's try it from, from the 90 degree. Reverse it. I don't want the highlight coming from him. Uh, let's put a stroke on it. And it's still a giant stroke, but we want this one to go outside. And we want it to be black. And I think I want an inner stroke too. So let's actually, this one is going to be. Let's put a stroke above it. And this other stroke is going to be red small and on the inside. Let's come through maybe a little lighter. Alright. A little bit thicker. Okay, and then let's put a drop shadow in because we can. Right? <laughs> because we can. Hey, it looks kind of cool, right? So there's more effects you can do with the, the text and things, but I kind of like I like how this turned out. So the, oh, the final thing is we'll put another layer and grab my pencil tool, and I think I'm gonna grab uh, let's grab a color out of the gradient. Now oh, let's grab the red here, and we basically zoom in if we can. Come on, oh, hello, hello, zoom in, hello. Ugh, I don't know why it's doing that. It's a, it's a weird glitch. Uh, let's zoom in with the nav navigator. So let's zoom in. I push the space bar for the hand tool. And it looks like I've got a little bit of a problem there. So let's go here and let's sign it. Boom. And we'll sign it with love. Why not? All right. So there you have it. The Sturge. <laughs> So anyway, uh, you know, there you have it. I uh, hope you liked uh, today's video. If you wanted to see me draw the pencil uh, drawings, uh, check out the link here, which is going to pop up. Uh, let's see if I'm looking at the camera. Yeah, it's going to pop up to the right. So uh, you got to go with stage left, stage right. You got to get used to that stuff. Um, thanks a lot. If you watch watched this far, please be sure to give me a like. That really helps. Uh, if you really like what I'm doing, subscribe. And definitely share this with your friends if you think they'll enjoy it. Uh, I'm going to take this, uh, this Sturge and uh, I'm going to make it into... Oh! Almost forgot. How do we actually make this into a token? So the last stage, right? Uh, the last stage to make this into your token. You turn off the background, unlock it, turn off the background so that's white. And then you do shift control alt s. That pulls up the save for web dialog. And I don't want it to be a JPEG, I want it to be a ping 24. Cuz that's going to give me uh, actually you can be you can have it be a ping 8. But ping 24 if you had a a, a feathered edge, that'll that supports the 24 levels of transparency, so you want to make sure you do that. But this one probably doesn't matter. It'll be a smaller file size if I go to uh, ping uh, 8, but I don't want ping 8 dithered. So let's go. We can go ping 8 here, and that'll come, it should go get smaller. So yeah, a lot smaller. But uh, I'm gonna keep it at ping 24 because it looks actually like the color table stays bigger too. And then um, 6,000 pixel depth token for a virtual tabletop is in nuts. So we're going to make it 96 and see what happens. And then tab down and it should shrink it up. So that's what it's going to look like on your desktop. So you can see how the detail disappears. But let's make it uh, double the size. So what is that? Uh, 180, uh, 180, 190, 192? plus 12 yeah 192 and see how that comes out so this way you can make it be a large size sturge so but you can shrink it down I think too in the programs so well at this point uh, we just click save 
and it's going to look for, hey, where did you save this thing? So I'm going to save this in my February 2022 video folder and say uh, that's it. So actually, that, that's a good idea too. So I'm going to save that, save this also in the February 2022, the, the, the Photoshop file, so that I don't that I don't lose it later. All right, and that's it. <laughs> it's a it's a virtual tabletop token. Uh, I'm going to save this to my website uh, in the blog in a blog post, so you can just uh, right click and save as and use it in your games. So uh, you know, thanks a lot, everybody. Hey, like I said before, if you made it this far. Uh, please click like. If you want to see me draw the, the do the initial drawing of the search, click this video over here. Uh, thanks a lot, and I will see you tomorrow. Where it's basically it's going to be another slog, a sketchbook slog, a sketchbook spec, bleh, sketchbook vlog, a slog. So thanks a lot, everybody. Hey, if you can give somebody a reason to smile, you just might get to smile too. Thanks a lot. See you tomorrow. Bye.